Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. You know, one of my favorite stories of ancient China is Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Most people probably know of that story from Dynasty Warriors. Hey, you know what? I love that game too. Uh, it's my favorite story because it involves so many things I like. Stories of honor, courage, sacrifice, and strategies. The entire Romance of the Three Kingdoms was basically three kingdoms trying to outsmart each other. The whole thing was like an intricate three-way chess match with each side trying to find more smart people people to join their cause. For example, the lord of the Shu kingdom, Liu Bei, wanted to have genius Zhuge Liang as his strategist and went to visit him three times in the harsh winter just to try to convince Zhuge Liang to join him. This story even coined the phrase Sangu Mao Lu, which literally means visiting a cottage three times. It is used today as a metaphor to describe when a person sincerely invites somebody to do something. Of course, there are countless significant historical figures throughout Chinese history. Some were known for their birth Bravery, some were known for their honor, some were known for their loyalty, and some were known for their brilliance. And in this video, I want to focus on the smarts. So here are five of the most brilliant people in Chinese history. And we'll start with number five, Hua Tuo. And this is a person whose profession is what everyone considers to be pretty smart, a doctor. Hua Tuo was a famous doctor in Chinese history who was believed to have had supernormal powers in which he could see through the human body and could detect people's illnesses, kind of like a human x-ray machine. Records show Hua Tuo was the first person in Chinese history to ever use anesthesia during surgery. Surgery. His most famous abilities included acupuncture and herbal medicine. He also developed the famous Wu Qin Xi, or exercise of the five animals, in which he studied movements from the tiger, deer, bear, ape, and crane. As brilliant as Hua Tuo was, he did meet his demise when he went to treat a patient named Cao Cao, who was the ruler of the Wei Kingdom during the Three Kingdoms era. When Cao Cao was complaining of his chronic headaches, his subjects recommended Hua Tuo since his skills were said to be legendary. Hua Tuo diagnosed Cao Cao and found that he had a tumor in his brain. Hua Tuo suggested to open Cao Cao's head with a sharp axe to extract the tumor. But Cao Cao grew suspicious and thought Hua Tuo was trying to kill him. Since Cao Cao was always paranoid, he threw Hua Tuo in prison and days later, Hua Tuo died. When Cao Cao realized that he indeed had a tumor, he went to look for Hua Tuo, but it was too late. And later, Cao Cao indeed died from that tumor. Number four, Jiang Ziya. Jiang Ziya was the advisor of King Wen of the Zhou Kingdom and was known throughout Chinese history as the master of a hundred ways. Basically, he was brilliant in everything from military strategies to how to run a country to philosophy. At age 32, Jiang Ziya went to live on a mountain to cultivate the Tao, improving himself by studying and living in accordance with Taoist teachings. At the time, the Shang Dynasty was in continuous state of war, and he went to the mountain in part to avoid the conflict. After 40 years of cultivation, Jiang Ziya came down from the mountain and served as an officer under the last Shang Dynasty ruler, Emperor Zhou, who was a tyrant addicted to alcohol and women. And this guy's emperor was the infamous Da Ji. Jiang Ziya concluded that the end of the Shang Dynasty would be near and decided to move to the Zhou Kingdom, which was ruled by the kind and virtuous King Wen. Jiang Ziya decided that he wanted to be King Wen's strategist, but the way he got his attention was kind of mysterious and odd. The story goes, Jiang Ziya went fishing along the river each day and waited for King Wen to pass by. He used a straight hook without any bait and a short fishing line that held the hook three feet above water and saying to himself, Constantly, only those willing to be caught come to bite my hook. He waited till he was 80 years old when King Wen finally came by one day on a hunting trip. The king saw the peculiar way that Jiang Ziya was fishing, so he stopped and had a chat with him. Jiang Ziya said to King Wen, The world is not owned by one person, but by all the people of the world. Jiang Ziya advised that a king should behave morally and cultivate virtue so that he could govern by virtuous and benevolent means. King Wen, impressed by Jiang Ziya's views on the ruler and the people, invited him to serve as his military advisor. With Jiang Ziya's advice, the Zhou Dynasty was established and became the longest-lasting dynasty in the history of China. Number three, Guan Zhou. 
Guangzhou. Guangzhou was a distinguished politician and strategist in the state of Qi during the spring and autumn period of Chinese history. He was appointed prime minister of Qi by Du Quan. Under Guan's governance, Qi became the most powerful state in that period. After becoming prime minister of Qi in 685 BC, Guangzhou started his modernization of the Qi state with multiple reforms, and his policies later helped Du Quan become a dominant leader in the spring and autumn period. Guan centralized state power by dividing the state into regular units to be administered by a central bureau that reported directly to the duke. Guangzhou completely overturned the tradition of passing down official government roles to aristocrats based solely on family background. He divided the population into four groups, officials, peasants, craftsmen, and merchants. He then developed a more effective method of selecting talented officials using new training programs and thereby also spawning a generation of professional bureaucrats. Instead of depending on small bands of soldiers training under different aristocratic families, he appealed to the villages directly to conscribe manpower for an army. With these reforms, Guan helped Qi steer the administrative responsibilities from the once powerful aristocratic clans to a professional centralized Bureau. These reforms were the early start of the emerging philosophy of legalism in which the monarchy should be absolute, administering strict control over all activities with a uniform system of rewards and punishment for everyone. During his 40 years as prime minister, Guangzhou implemented a series of reform measures in both domestic and foreign affairs. With his assistance, she was prosperous, strong, and politically influential. Guangzhou is credited as the author of Guanzi, the earliest known book on legalism, and had a large impact on the economic development of ancient China. Number two, Zhang Liang. Zhang Liang was known as one of the three heroes of the early Han Dynasty. He was a chief military strategist, minister, and advisor to Liu Bang, the founding emperor of the Han Dynasty. Zhang Liang was famous for his ability to win battles 1,000 miles away without ever stepping outside the command tent. Along with his great talent and specialized military strategies, he was also known for his tolerance and respect for the elderly and for his modest and frugal way of life. Zhang Liang was born into an aristocratic family in the Han state during the Warring States period. For five generations, his ancestors served its ruler. When the state was dissolved by Qin Shi Huang, founder of the Qin Dynasty, Zhang spent his entire family fortune for an assassination attempt on Qin Shi Huang's life. However, the attempt failed and Zhang was forced to flee to another state. While a fugitive, Zhang Liang traveled about. One windy and snowy day, he was strolling near a bridge when he saw an old man sitting on the bridge. When the old man saw Zhang Liang, he deliberately dropped his shoe, which rolled to the bottom of the bridge, then he asked Zhang Liang to go and fetch it for him. Despite the slippery conditions and being unhappy about the situation, Zhang Liang not only fetched the shoe but also knelt down and put it back on the old man's foot. Seeing Zhang Liang's respect for elders, the old man smiled and told him that he would be worth teaching. He instructed Zhang Liang to meet him the next morning for a lesson. So the next morning, Zhang Liang went to the bridge before dawn, yet he found that the old man already was there waiting. The old man angrily scolded him for keeping an elder waiting and told John to come back tomorrow. Although Zhang Liang went earlier than the first time, the same thing happened again. So the third day, Zhang Liang went to the bridge at midnight and waited until the old man arrived. Finally, satisfied, the old man gave Zhang Liang a book and told him, when you fully understand this book, you will be able to serve as a teacher to an emperor. If you need more help from me, I am the yellow rock at the foot of Mount Gucheng. According to a classic Chinese folktale, the old man was actually a deity called Huang Shi. Gong, the Yellow Rock Ancient. The book he supposedly gave Zhang Liang was called The Strategies of Huang Shigong or Tai Gong's Art of War. After studying the book, Zhang Liang became known for his military strategies and his ability to manage changing situations. Thanks to Zhang Liang's counsel on political policy and military strategy, Liu Bang won many battles and became the first emperor of the Han Dynasty. And finally, number one and probably the most well-known, Zhuge Liang. The famous Zhuge Liang was a chancellor living in the Three Kingdoms period around the 180 AD and was known to be the most accomplished strategist of his time and is often depicted wearing a Taoist robe and holding a fan made of crane feathers. While living as a young hermit, Zhuge Liang was known as Wulong or Crouching Dragon. He wasn't known as Hidden Dragon because people actually were able to find him. And the person who found him was Liu Bei, a warlord of the Eastern Han who visited him three times to enlist his help. 
Zhuge Liang finally agreed to leave his solitary life to assist Liu Bei, whose ambition was to re-establish the Han Dynasty to its former strength. Zhuge Liang was the mastermind behind the alliance between Liu Bei and warlord Sun Quan. Their decisive victory over Cao Cao in the Battle of Red Cliffs led to China's division into three territories, setting the stage for the later formation of the three kingdoms of Wei, Shu, and Wu. In the spring of the year 222, Liu Bei became seriously ill and summoned Zhuge Liang from Chengdu. Liu Bei then told him, You are ten times greater than Cao Cao and are capable of securing the country and accomplishing the mission. If my son needs assistance, then assist him. And if he is incompetent, then you may take over the throne. To which Zhuge Liang replied tearfully, I'll do my utmost and serve with unwavering loyalty until death. Zhuge Liang is known for his great military achievements, but he was also a famous inventor. He actually invented the mantou, the landmine, the special Zhuge crossbow, and an early type of hot air balloon. The stone sentinel maze, which is an array of rocks and boulders said to produce supernatural phenomena, and is based on the bagua, which was also believed to be conjured up by Zhuge Liang. In Chinese culture, Zhuge Liang's name is associated with unbeatable strategy, devotion to the state, and the embodiment of wisdom. So there you go, guys. Those are some people who are widely considered as some of the smartest in Chinese history. I mean, these guys are, are insanely smart. If you read some of these stories, they could basically manipulate people's minds and in some cases seem to be able to even see into the future. And we'll definitely cover a lot of those stories on this channel. Thank you all so much for watching this video. See you later.